Roger. I mean, we've laid all this out. We've told folks it's here, and now I have Colonel Schaefer of the CIA high level, and we've got top psychiatrists from you know from the federal government that have examined these people, and they're saying clearly he's Antifa. Clearly, it's the MO to trigger a helter skelter revolution. Clearly, the Democrats are saying hashtag hunt Republicans. They've created the climate. Uh, I mean, this is an incredible time to be alive where they target patriots and then blame us for it. Roger, what's your gut tell you? Because this is just so bombshell. Well, yesterday, Alex, as you know, on The War Room, uh, we aired um, a video that we found uh, at YouTube that clearly shows Paddock, the shooter, attending an anti-Trump rally. A woman refers to him by his first name, Stephen. He he uh, answers to it, making it even more obvious that he has a leftist connection. And if it's not him, it's his twin brother. I mean, the video is conclusive. It is him or, or it's his twin brother. There's no there's no question about it. And, uh, you know, you and I both remember back in 1963 when the mainstream media came out almost immediately and said Lee Harvey Oswald, lone nut, communist, came from Russia, and so on, and that became the official narrative. That won't work anymore. It's not 1963 anymore. Now people can harness the power of InfoWars, the power of the Internet, and a dozen other alternative uh, media Well, let's outlets. say it. I mean, it's the autistic keyboard army. The media says we say that meanly. No, they call themselves that. They'll do it 25 hours a day. I know there's only 24. It's a joke for the Young Turks. I don't know how many hours are in a day. That 25 hours a day, it's like 110%. Uh, that They will go in there and find every piece of data. You cannot stop them. No, it's actually exciting in the sense that it's a tragedy, of course, that uh, this awful loss of life. But what we're seeing is citizen democracy in action. We no longer have to buy the BS of the mainstream media who will give us the government sanitized version of what happened in Las Vegas. We will, collectively we, will get to the bottom of this and we will find out exactly what happened. That's right. It's an information total revolution. Like 1776, but squared to the next level. It's beautiful. It's incredible. It's unstoppable. Well, and uh, I think you put it right in the first uh, in the opening here. Which this is beginning to smell more and more like some kind of gun running operation. Uh, is it odd that this fellow has no history whatsoever of any social media contact? That would be typical of a government agent, an FBI agent, for example, or a DEA agent, that he has no record as a gun enthusiast, yet he has a veritable arsenal in his room, an arsenal no one saw him bring in and no one saw him bring ammunition or any of the other necessary pieces, the elaborate filming uh, apparatus and so on. How very strange. Uh, and then we track him undeniably to an anti-Trump rally, actually two different anti-Trump rallies, two different events. I think that that's a This pattern. is like Lee Harvey Oswald at the communist rallies. Well, it very well. He could have been put there as a plant. That's entirely possible. Oh, he worked at Lockheed, and, and it looks like Skunk Works Connected Areas and NASA. I mean, this is classic. Lee Harvey yeah, Oswald that, Lee Harvey Oswald worked at the, at the U2 uh, uh, proto Skunk Works. Well, and as you know, they told us in the Warren Commission he was a known communist. Then why was he handing out anti-communist literature in New Orleans? going out of his way to get in a scuffle, arrested, taken to the New Orleans police station. He's allowed one phone call. Does he call his lawyer? Does he call his wife? No, he calls the head of the FBI, and in 30 minutes he's sprung with no charges. Hmm, how curious. It's all in the man who killed Kennedy, the, the case against LBJ. But uh, I do see these strange parallels, Alex. The difference is now you have a crusading independent alternative uh, 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 journalistic tradition in this country that's taken root through the internet and they're not going to be able to pull the wool over our eyes. We're going to get to the bottom of this and I don't even think we've begun in terms of ferreting out the facts. I salute Laura Loomer, the, I like to call her little Laura Loomer because Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin are so deathly afraid of her. There's a woman I like. Absolutely. And I got to say, I love you triggering them with the matching American flag behind you for radio listeners. People can watch at Infowars.com forward slash show or many other places. But man, I got to tell you, people say, why all the American flags? You only had them sometimes. Well, now that they're so triggered and want it banned and call it evil, 
you know, now Old Glory, you know, stronger than ever because we've retaken the country to a great extent. It's our flag again, and we're flying that sucker in everybody's face. So get used to it. It is so offensive to see what's happening in the NFL uh, and to see the people uh, who are trying to tear down the great traditions and the democratic milestones of this country. No, America's not perfect. But no, we've come a long way, and, 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 and we're a great country. Well, particularly in the area of racial injustice. I mean, look, Abraham Lincoln, Dr. King, Malcolm X, these, these men died to, to outlaw discrimination. And now folks are acting like they didn't get anything done. Uh, that they act like nothing's happened. No, America's not perfect. Yes, we still have racial discrimination, but at least today it's illegal. At least today it can be pursued in the courts. At least it is the law of the land, and great men like Dr. King are responsible for that. That's right. Roger Stone's taking over here in two minutes. I just want publics to know that his favorite nootropic, that's Brain Pill, Brain Booster, uh, Secret 12 is also going to be uh, ending uh, its sale today at 40% off, but we have the Brain Force Plus, now 20% more, that is 50% off. We've never gone with that big of a sale, not because it's not selling. It's sold out for months. I said double the shipment. I want a humongous shipment uh, so I can really discount this baby. And, you know, don't worry, we still make like $5 or so, $6. But at, at this price, it really is me like a drug pusher <laughs> trying to get you addicted. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious, but, you know, there's always some truth to a joke, at least 5% of it. I mean, it, 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 it's healthy, it's good, it's great. I want you to try it. Just like our coffee is addictive and great. I want you to try that as well. It's discounted right now. 50% off InfoWarsLife.com or 888 Brain force can run for another week, but vitamin mineral fusion, we've never gone 50% off on it with the, the amino acids, total absorption. It's so great. That is going to have to stop today because it'll be months till we get more uh, if I don't because it's going to sell out. So a bunch of these specials, caveman, vitamin mineral fusion, secret 12, they're all either ending today or in the next three days. By that, Vitamin Mineral Fusion's gone today at 50% off. And then it's going to be the others in the next few days. We haven't done the math of the numbers yet. Uh, but again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888 253 -3139. But thank you all for committing to the InfoWar. Thank you for financially supporting us. Thank you for buying these products. Thank you for spreading the word. Thank you for being the InfoWar. Get free shipping as well at InfoWarsStore.com. When you sign up for auto ship, you're going to get an additional 10% off on top of that as well. Infowarstore.com. Make the commitment today to fund the war. They are your war bonds. We are savage. We are winning. We are unstoppable with God's help and you behind us. Stay with us. Roger Stone, straight ahead. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm Roger Stone. Here's some breaking news. Uh, a group of Republicans in New York's 18th Congressional District uh, have approached uh, the singer celebrity Joy Via about being the Republican candidate for Congress to oppose Democratic Congressman Sean Maloney in that district. Via is, of course, a native New Yorker, and evidently uh, a number of her admirers are uh, imploring her to return to her home state and seek that congressional seat. No word yet whether Via is interested or whether she's going to consider it, but having met her recently in Las Vegas at a, a conservative political action conference, I can tell you she is one uh, impressive, articulate, beautiful, conservative woman, and she'd make a heck of a candidate. So I'm hoping, uh, just on a personal level, that she makes the race. Now, Sean Maloney is a very smart, capable guy, very articulate uh, advocate for his own liberal point of view. It would be a classic, classic race. While the entire world remains focused on Las Vegas, confusion after the terrorists, the terror act there, not even three full days have passed since this revolting attack in Las Vegas, and the story inconsistencies and the number of conspiracy theories that are sprouting like mushrooms uh, on decayed wood are really quite extraordinary. Uh, word comes from the LA Times that Stephen Paddock was a regular at the Virgin River Casino Starbucks 
in Mesquite, Nevada, that he uh, gambled very large sums, very strange for a man who we're told was a retired accountant with no activity of either gun enthusiasm or political activity. Um, he was seen there many times with his companion, a uh, Filipino woman named Mary Lou Danley, uh, and one uh, barista told the LA Times uh, that he often saw Paddock abusing Dan, uh, Danley. Uh, he was nasty, mean to her, quoting things like, I'm paying for your drink just like I'm paying for you. Um, then, unabashedly, Danley would step down and say, okay. Uh, so, looking at Paddock's own words, albeit hearsay, via a Starbucks barista, he was paying for Mary Lou uh, Danley, like paying for a cup of coffee. Uh, and um, it is, uh, I think, gives us some insights into his psyche. Taken at face value, we know that he doesn't like to be alone. We know the service he pays for are not real, and more so, having a paid companion prohibits ability to find any truly meaningful relationship, but I doubt the man cares. Now, is this all psychobabble? Yes, to a certain extent, we are all guessing. But there's an army of citizen journalists out there, and the digging has begun. And we already begun to find uh, holes in the uh, seemingly inconsistent and most definitely incomplete official narrative as to what really happened here, who Stephen Paddock really is, whether he is in fact the shooter, whether he is in fact the only shooter. Since you have different shooting stations, uh, some uh, of those with much greater gun experience uh, than I have, have questioned his ability to move quickly enough between stations, given the weight and mobility of the weapons he was using. Uh, Laura Loomer, I think, uh, was among those who pointed out uh, that we, uh, we have uh, evidence of a woman, a second guest, in Paddock's room, or room 32135, but we still have no official explanation of who this woman was, whether she was potentially a prostitute or a confederate. Uh, and then there is the double order of the receipt. Now, the FBI insists that Paddock checked into the Mandalay Bay Resort on September 28, 2017. Uh, you can see this repeated over and over and over again by the mainstream media. Uh, New York Magazine only a couple of hours ago repeating that date. Yet if we look at the actual receipt from the Mandalay Bay Hotel, we see that it's actually dated September 27th, 2017. Now this is gasoline for the conspiracy uh, fire. This is what leads people to jump to uh, a broad distrust of both the mainstream media and the federal and state governments who feed us this nonsense. Why would the authorities mislead the public about something so simple as his check-in date? And if they're misleading us about this, what else are they misleading us about? Now, from the dark recesses of the Internet comes even more unvetted connections, but some of these leads are so incredible, I have to share. It kind of starts with the disgraced California state senator, an ex-state senator named Lee Lin Yi. Yi was arrested and convicted after a to a five-year sentence for accepting bribes and trafficking arms through, yes, you guessed it, the Philippines. Uh, with more than 20 uh, firearms found in Paddock's rooms, it seems uh, that um, there may have been some effort uh, that ties uh, the Philippines uh, the girlfriend to uh, a gun running operation akin to Fast and Furious. We are um, looking into this, a 137-page 37, affidavit, which was the results of a five-year investigation on Leland Yi, which was made public by the FBI, soon after his arrest, revealed the senator was allegedly proactive in dealing arms through uh, the Philippines, uh, through Muslim groups there. Whether we can establish any tie uh, to 
Stephen Paddock remains to be seen, but we at InfoWars are working assiduously on this story. Uh, the reason that I bring this up is to clearly state that the FBI is still known to track and attempt international buyers and sellers of guns, particularly to drug lords and terrorists. The fast and furious gun walking scandal was the result of just one such effort going all the way back to 2009. Leland Lee is a more current example, 2016. There can be little doubt that such activity still uh, is uh, going on, uh, yet uh, we come to an impasse when it comes to getting in any answers about Stephen Paddock. We are going to be uh, staying on top of this. We don't know whether some kind of deal was going down at Mandalay Bay. Do We don't know whether the feds know more about this than they are telling us. We know we're not getting the straight story because of so many holes in the official versions so far. Many people who were on the terrible site that night say that they personally witnessed multiple shooters, and therein lies a deep problem with the official narrative. I'm Roger Stone, you're here on The Alex Jones Show, and I'll be right back. I'm Roger Stone, sitting in for Alex Jones, and you're on The Alex Jones Show here at InfoWars. Uh, as the Robert Mueller investigation and testifies, new details are coming out every day about that direction of that uh, very controversial probe. But buried in the story may be some intense legal problems with the uh, warrant uh, that was uh, laid on Paul Manafort when his apartment was uh, uh, raided at, uh, at 5 o'clock in the morning by the FBI at the behest of Special Counselor Mueller. It seems that Mueller's team obtained evidence not on the listed warrant as required by law. And in fact, uh, in the July 26th uh, raid, uh, the FBI may have removed uh, materials covered by the attorney-client privilege. That could, uh, in fact, taint the entire uh, taking of evidence during the raid. Uh, we have uh, numerous precedents uh, of judges very recently saying that too sweeping uh, a warrant violates the Fourth Amendment. So in other words, Robert Mueller's bully boy tactics, which were orchestrated by investigator Adam Weissman, may now backfire on uh, his inquiry in to the president. Um, the other uh, major development that I think bears attention was uh, a little-known comment by uh, General John Kelly in the Washington Post only this past week. Kelly said that all policy initiatives now would go to White House aide Mark Short. Now, Mark Short formerly worked for the Koch brothers, comes out of the uh, Americans for Prosperity uh, uh, nonprofit organization funded by the Kochs. The Kochs, you'll remember, are no particular fans of Donald J. Trump, and they opposed his nomination uh, as the Republican nominee for president, essentially until the bitter end. What's interesting, of course, is that Stephen Miller is the individual who still holds the title of Director of Policy uh, and Planning. And under the White House flowchart, all policy is supposed to flow to Miller. So was General Kelly giving us the early heads up that Stephen Miller, the last remaining Trump campaign veteran, the man who, uh, whose eloquence and whose writing talents so incredibly punched up the president's superb address at the United Nations only weeks ago, uh, is Miller himself, the last standing Trumpite inside the Trump White House, not long for this world. That would be uh, after the departure of Stephen K. Bannon, uh, after the downgrading of Peter Navarro, the president's special trade representative, 
Uh, and we have to wonder whether Miller, who we refer to as the minister of propaganda, uh, and we say that affectionately, is long for this world, or whether there is some lateral transfer uh, in mind for Mr. Miller. We here at InfoWars are fans of uh, Stephen Miller because of his ability to handle the mainstream media in a most efficient manner. If you've ever seen this guy stand up in a press scrum, he is nothing short of brilliant. But more importantly, he completely understands the president's mind. He's completely copacetic with the president when it comes to the agenda for reform in this country. He is the last remaining true loyal Trumpite in the building. It will be a tremendous tragedy if General Kelly, who is succeeding based on all reports in bringing down an iron curtain around the president, cutting him off from longtime associates, political supporters, campaign staff, and yes, in some instances, cutting him off from his very own family. It will be a tragedy if Mr. Miller joins the ranks of those who've been squeezed out of the, uh, of the Trump White House. Seen uh, in Washington yesterday, uh, Miller had no comment on these press reports. Uh, I do want to mention to you uh, now that Secret 12, which I have found to be without any question the best multi-vitamin uh, and mineral formula uh, out there, uh, B12 specifically, uh, is probably 40% uh, off probably the greatest sale ever on this product. Now, B12 is absolutely necessary uh, for, uh, for, for uh, cultivating the energy, if you will. Uh, it's in my daily regimen, and I have looked uh, at the labels of the B12 supplements you can buy at the local Walgreens or CVS, and I can tell you that Alex Jones and the folks at InfoWars put nothing at the InfoWars.com site that isn't the very best of the best, that doesn't have not only the best natural ingredients, but is tested and retested, and in many cases, have thousands of testimonials from satisfied customers. This is what Alex Jones calls a 360 degree win, because you get not only good, effective, efficient products at a good price, but you're propping up our war against censorship. You're backing us in the fight against the mainstream media who, if they had their way, would snuff us. The tech left, the Yahoos, the Amazons, the Googles, who uh, would try to censor us if they could. You see, we don't have a George Soros standing in the uh, uh, backstage writing multi-million dollar checks. We can't count on the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation. No, we raise the money through products like Caveman, which right now uh, is available in both the chocolate and strawberry formulas at 50% off. That's 50% off of retail, folks. You may never see a sale this great again at the Infowars.com store. Now, Caveman fuses ancient, powerful nutrition with cutting-edge nutraceutical science to create a high-quality supplement that uses bone broth and more than seven different primal superfoods to give you power and strength like you've never felt before. Very good friend of mine, Adam Powers, professional bodybuilder, uh, swears by Caveman, would not be without it as part of his regimen, and he's preparing to compete shortly. Asked me to get him some more Caveman because it was running low, and I pointed out that it was 50% off of retail only today. So uh, a salute to Adam Powers, who's heading for a bodybuilding competition, uh, and uh, a recommendation to you again that you secure your supply of Caveman at 50% off retail before it sells out once and for all. Um, there have been, this product is so popular, there have been some delays, so I urge you, Act now at 50% off. I know that Michael Zimmerman particularly likes the bone broth aspect of this. He was 
talking about it in Washington only uh, a week ago. Yes, you are on InfoWars. I'm Roger Stone, and I've been sitting in for the great Alex Jones. If you want to follow the very latest out of Las Vegas, if you're tired of the filter of CNN and the mainstream media and those who would tell you what they'd like you to believe happened as opposed to those here who will tell you what we know, well, then stay tuned to InfoWars and you can get the stone cold truth. I'm Roger Stone, and I'll be right back. I'm Roger Stone, and yes, you're here at the uh, InfoWars.com on the Alex Jones Show, where I'm sitting in for my friend and fellow patriot, Alex Jones. A major story that we broke here at InfoWars.com involved the former Chinese intelligence agent, Miles Kwok, uh, and the efforts uh, to keep this Hillary Clinton bundler uh, and George Soros associate, uh, who's currently living in the United States illegally in New York City, from being extradited to the Chinese homeland. Uh, as we discussed, when we broke the story here on InfoWars, it got major international coverage. And here is an important update. Uh, evidently, uh, Mr. Kwok uh, went to Washington, D.C. today, where he was supposed to speak to the neocon think tank, the Hudson Institute. At the last minute, I believe at the behest of our State Department, that speech was canceled. Uh, we also learned uh, that Kwok was to hold a press conference at the National Press Club today, and evidently, again, from governmental pressure, that event was also canceled. Now, we've reported that Kwok has deep ties to Iran and the United Arab Emirates, uh, in my opinion, he is a national security risk, but more importantly, he's become a sticking point in Sino-U.S. relations. When President Trump met in Palm Beach with uh, Xia, the presidential, pardon me, the Chinese leader, um, this was one of the sticking points in getting Chinese cooperation on the issue of North Korea. This past weekend, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein visited Beijing, China, uh, and China agreed to even more sanctions on North Korea out of those, those meetings. President Donald Trump deserves a lot of credit. Never in history has a U.S. president gotten so much cooperation from China vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. Barack Obama, you will call, attempted and failed. But now, this issue of Kwok came up at the meetings. Tillerson and Rosenstein have both promised the Chinese government that the Chinese uh, rogue intelligence agent turned Obama, pardon me, a Clinton bundler and longtime Soros associate will be extradited to face criminal charges in China. Remember, Kwok is found guilty of both financial crimes there and here. Uh, the Chinese government has repeatedly told the Trump White House they want Kwok extradited. Now, Kwok is a sophisticated intelligence agent, and with the help of super liberal Democratic lawyer David Boyes, you remember him, he represented Al Gore in the 20 uh, and the 2000 Florida recount, they have launched a counterintelligence scheme. Kwok was being represented by a law firm uh, on his asylum application in a last ditch attempt to avoid extradition to China. My sources tell me that the law firm dumped Kwok because he lied on that application and he failed to disclose his criminal record in China. Kwok then hired hackers to hack the law firm and release his asylum application on Twitter. Now, uh, warmongers and anti-Trumpists in the government are using this to try to stop the extradition. Is it uh, odd that the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, with deep ties to a think tank funded by George Soros, seems to be the lone voice within the Trump administration 
opposing extradition of Kwok, a known Soros associate. Once again, Kwok traveled to the United States on a false passport. He's in business with the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and a national security risk. The president is being undermined by McMaster, uh, but appears that uh, this could uh, be leaded, leading to the extradition of Mr. Kwok and therefore greater Chinese cooperation in our efforts to isolate the one they call Rocket Man. Uh, let us look at the clock here if we can. Uh, and uh, let me say that we broke that story here on InfoWars, and it was the shot heard around the world. We will bring you the latest. You won't read it in the Washington Post or in the uh, New York Times. You see uh, there a piece of agate prop by Michael Forsyth of the New York Times. Uh, there are many in the mainstream media attempting to cover Quack's tracks, uh, but we here at InfoWars have brought you the inside story. Uh, imagine my shock this morning when I went to the mailbox and I opened the two invoices from the attorneys who represented me before the House Intelligence Committee only last week. Uh, I had just seen their previous bills because, as many of you know, and as we broke right here at InfoWars.com, I'm being sued by an Obama front organization called the Project for Democracy, who have sued me, Donald Trump, and the Trump campaign with the phony claim yet again that we assisted the Russians in hacking the Democratic National Committee and then handed that material over to WikiLeaks. It's a falsehood, folks. It's a fraud, a fairy tale. It never happened. But that doesn't stop somebody, in this case, a large group of somebodies, a group of fairly prominent attorneys, all alum of the Obama administration, from filing a frivolous but detailed lawsuit against me. A lawsuit, by the way, that contains no evidence of wrongdoing whatsoever. It's merely a series of accusations. Well, the bottom line, folks, is that my legal bills have now hit $426,000. Yes, that's what it costs just to defend yourself from the leftist onslaught. Uh, I am uh, being pursued not because I've done anything wrong, but because I support Donald Trump and I'll never quit. I'll never stop. And they know it. Frankly, I think this is all meant to be a distraction. So if you want to help the Stone family, if you want to help with these exorbitant legal uh, expenses, you can go to stonedefensefund.com, uh, which will take you to who framed Roger Stone. You see uh, a brief description of the charges that I am fighting, the phony charges. I point out that I still have not heard from the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, and I fully expect to testify there in the coming weeks or months, which is why I'm highly confident my legal expenses are going to top a half million dollars. Now, uh, I am not a wealthy man. My books do pretty well. Uh, they pay me a nice stipend here at uh, Infowars.com, uh, but I treasure my independence. I turned down a dozen opportunities to join big Washington lobbying firms where I could have traded my relationships in Trump world for millions of dollars. I did that in the 80s. I have no interest in doing it again. So I have to rely on friends and supporters like you, patriots who know the truth, and therefore any contribution at the stonedefensefund.com will be deeply appreciated. While you're at it, however, I want you to go to the Infowars.com store where the entire line of Emmerich uh, essential oils and products are available. Now, these are the things that you would normally buy at the drugstore for your home. The difference is you can get them in an all-natural format uh, without additives, without chemicals, without other carcinogen-causing uh, factors. 
Uh, these are the very best all natural products, whether it is body wash, mouthwash, uh, suntan lotion, bug spray. Uh, these are highly tested all natural household products available only at the Infowars.com store. And this is a win win. You help finance the fight for freedom, the fight for truth, the fight against the godless atheistic globalists, and you get the very best natural products that can be found. So please, folks, go to the website, support us here. I'm Roger Stone. Victory or death.